Okay. <clears throat> In the last class, we have discussed low pass filter using RC circuit. First, we have find out its desired characteristics using Laplace transform in the analog domain and then we have sampled sequence and find out its digital transformation using Z domain and then find out the equivalent digital filter for the low pass in digital domain and also realize the same system. If we remember the exact part that we have achieved a poles with that transfer function in Z domain and those poles will make that particular system nothing but an IIR filter that is infinite impulse response so that is the basic understanding we have till now and we have seen the idea moving from analog domain to digital domain and receiving an IIR filter at the end right so today we'll have go through some introduction of digital filter design and basic ideas of the filters so that that will make the entire thing as a basic operation for our further studies okay so today we'll discuss introduction to digital filters. We have already seen this particular part, right? But we are just going through this again. So in the design of frequency selective filters, the desired filter characteristics are specified in frequency domain. That is in omega domain. Right? In terms of desired magnitude and phase response of the filter. That means H of omega is the magnitude. And angle of omega that is phase. So these are the magnitude and phase response of the filter. Right? In filter design process, we determine the coefficients of a causal FIR and IIR filters. Why causal? Because we have already seen an ideal filter suffers. From first non causal nature, second, they are not summable and hence unstable in nature. Right? What does this mean? It's when we draw an ideal characteristics of a low pass filter if you want to draw an ideal characteristics of a low pass filter which will have a sharp transition at minus omega c and omega c and if it goes from pi to minus pi so these transitions are very sharp these transitions are very sharp due to which the due to which the HN of this filter is non-causal in nature and also not, is not summable thus making the system unstable. So what one can do what one can do is realize the system in more practical way. What is the more practical way? If you want to realize just you will draw in one side that is mean pi and then the transition will not be abrupt but will vary like something like this. So its ideal value maximum value will be 1 and then it will attenuate slightly right and reach a particular frequency we call it this is omega c that is cutoff frequency and at that particular frequency the magnitude is 1 by root 2 that is this is omega c is the 3 db band 3 db frequency and also called cutoff frequency and similarly there will be 
a one frequency that we call as omega s and between omega c to omega s is called transition band from 0 to omega c this is pass band this particular frequency we are interested we want to pass this particular frequency and we want to perfectly attenuate this particular frequency omega s to pi we want to attenuate this particular frequency and thus it will be a stop band now to remove the causality and the unstable nature of the ideal filter we have to introduce this particular transition band and if we will not introduce this particular system then our system will be unstable in nature or it will have non causality that's when it is un, uh, it is not practical to realize that particular system so as a design engineer what our target is we will modify the constants of poles and zeros that is a k and b k of the ir and fir filter such that this transition band will be as smaller as possible now if we want obviously there are no free lunches if we want this transition band to be very small that's mean omega s minus omega c very small that mean more complexity so it requires the application perspective if your application is such that it requires very sharp transitions or it does not tolerate much of this transition band right then you have to sacrifice much hardware to obtain this small transition band and if your application is sufficient to handle such large transition band and your application doesn't require that much of accuracy then you can go with the lower order and achieve your application next is we want to realize the fir and ir bit systems so before that we want to find out what fir bit system is and what ir bit system is fir is also called finite impulse response okay so for a system with hn is equal to 0 for n less than 0 and n greater than equals to m that particular system is called finite impulse response system so in that particular case so if we have a system and we provide an input xn and hn is the transfer function or impulse response of the system and yn is the output then yn will be equal to xn convolution hn that is equal to summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 hk x of n minus a as this hn is defined from k equals to 0 to m minus 1 that's why this convolution is also limited to k equals to 0 to m minus 1. That is, we can say the output yn, output yn is simply the weighted sum of the input signals. yn is simply the weighted sum. of the input signals such as 
xn xn minus 1 xn minus 2 up to xn minus m plus 1 and we can say that fir uses views only the most recent m input signals or samples in forming the output and it simply neglects or forgets all previous input like it forgot forgets all previous inputs like x n minus m x n minus m plus 1 sorry n minus m minus 1 and so on that means an fir system has finite memory a fire system has finite memory but that memory has to be of size of m because its impulse response is of size m that means its memory should be of size m that is the required part next type of classification using the impulse response is called IIR called infinite impulse response that is for a system with HN defined from zero to infinity. Right? That's mean if we have a system and HN is input, HN is the impulse response of the system and XN is the output and YN is the output then yn will be equal to xn convolution hn and yn can be written as summation k equals to 0 to infinity hk x of n minus k now one can see as compared to a fire system to realize IIR system with convolution form we require an infinite amount of memory right but if we use some other technique then this particular system could be realized with a very simple phenomena and we'll take that particular case with an example let's take an example of cumulative averaging right it take all its previous input till number n and as n goes towards infinity so the output can be written as y n equals to 1 over n plus 1 with summation k equals to 0 to n with x k as an input and n is equal to 0 1 2 3 
and it goes up to infinity that means it is a nothing but an IIR system so for this particular case one can easily write n plus 1 y n equals to summation k equals to 0 n x of k and then n plus 1 y n equals to summation k equals to 0 to n minus 1 x k plus x n then if we see this particular case this is nothing but the previous output we have achieved that means it is nothing but n plus 1 y n equals to n into y n minus 1 plus x n ok so if we want to find out the current input and output relation then y n will be equal to n over n plus 1 y n minus 1 plus 1 over 1 plus n plus 1 x n now as this n tends to infinity right so we doesn't require this x n to remember all its previous inputs but we what we can do is we have to just remember the previous output that is this previous output Okay. So if we remember this previous output, our we just require only one memory unit to realize this infinite memory system. with n tends to infinity so we require only one memory unit to realize this infinite memory system which is previously i want to add this previously an infinite memory system and now we can realize this particular system with this equation where previous output is taken as in previous condition to find out the current output with the current input and this particular system only require one memory unit which will store the previous output and this previous output previous output is nothing but the initial condition of this previous output is nothing but the initial condition of next next state right so if we apply this particular same process with IIR filter and find out a generalized difference equation this particular systems are called difference equation and this particular system is also called recursive systems because it used its previous output to get its current state and these are called recursive state recurs recursive system so we want to analyze this particular system and the analysis of, analysis of this particular system are represented by these equations or called difference equations right so these are the difference equation which we have find out so this is the difference equation right so one can find out and generalize difference equation right so that generalized difference equation will be equal to yn equals to minus k equals to 1 and minus 1 a k y and minus k plus summation k equals to 0 m minus 1 bk x of n minus k 
Now this particular system represents both IIR and FIR field. So for the case of FIR filter, FIR, I am not saying filter right now, filter we will analyze later on, but I am just saying for the case of FIR, Yn is equal to summation k equals to 0, m minus 1, hk, x of n minus k. Comparing with this particular system, we get hk is equal to summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 bk right so this so this bk is nothing but the impulse response of the system and when we want to realize this fir system we want to find out the values of this bk as this bk will define the impulse response of the system okay next is for the case of IIR filters. So, for the case of IIR filters. So, we have already seen we have already seen that Yn is equal to summation n equals to 0 sorry k equals to 0 to infinity h of k and thus xn minus k which is we have already characterized in difference equation so we will write again the difference equation in the form yn equals to minus summation k equals to 1 to n minus 1 a k y n minus k plus summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 b k x n minus k. Now we will just see this particular part and we want to find out how an impulse response will look like. So what does it mean is for this particular system which is already represented in this form is taking a case that we are giving an input signal xn and we have a transfer function hn and we are getting an output yn right so xn for the case we are giving equal to delta n that's mean it is only defined at n equals to 0 and for all other values its value is 0 so its value is 1 at n equals to 0 and for other va all values its value is 0. Now we want to find out what is the value of yn and how it look like. Right. So for the case first we will put n equals to 0. Right. In this particular case it will be y0 will be equal to summation k equals to 0. minus with sorry k equals to 1 n minus 1 a k y minus k plus summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 b k x minus k. So if we put the values it will be a1 y minus 1 minus sign minus a2 y minus 2 and so on. Similarly minus 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 goes like this. Then similarly this b0 x0 plus b1 x minus 1 plus and so on. If we know the system initial conditions are all 0 and we are taking a causal system so y minus 1 is 0 
y minus 2 is 0 and so all other values which come into this particular part are 0. Similarly, x of minus 1 is also 0. Only the value which will remain is x0. So y0 is nothing but equal to b0. x At x0, the delta function's value is 1. So the output is y0 is equal to b0. Now the next is n equals to 1. We want to find out value at n equals to 1. Now, please remember at this particular point, we have not provided any input. At n equals to 1, we didn't ha have any input, but we want to find out the output. So, y1 that will be equal to minus summation k equals to 1 to n minus 1 a k y 1 minus k plus k equals to 0 m minus 1 b k x 1 minus k. Okay. So now this will be minus a1 y0 minus a1 a2 sorry a2 y minus 1 and then minus and so on. Next is plus b1 x sorry b0 x1 plus b1 x of 0 right plus b2 x of minus 1 plus b3 x of minus and so on. We can see this a to y minus 1 is actually 0. Similarly, x1 is also 0. b to x minus 1 is also 0. x minus 2 is also 0. Only thing remains is this that we have already obtained this y0 and the value of y0 is we have obtained is b0. So, the output is minus a1 b0 plus b1 into x0 and the value of x0 is 1. So, the value is minus a10 plus b1. Similarly, if we will find out the value of n equals to 2, n equals to 3, n equals to 4, we will get the values because for all values you can see when, the, when there will part y0, y1, y2, we will receive the value of y0, y1 every time because these are our initial conditions and that will charge our system further up. So the response of this particular system is called infinite impulse response. Right? So this particular difference equation which we have generalized in nature is actually an IIR difference equation with a recursive system with an exception of FIR case when the output case is not taken. Right? So, we can write this difference equation in z domain, right? That is, that will be equal to yz equal to minus summation k equals to 1 to n minus 1 a k yz z minus k plus summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 b k xz z minus k then if we find out the transfer function that is hz that will be equal to yz over xz is equal to summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 bk z minus k over 1 plus summation k equals to 1 to n minus 1 a k z minus k. So, this is the transfer function of an edz with the poles it will be an IR filter without poles it will be an FIR filter. 
there will be also case when we will have a pole and then also we will have a kind of apparent filter that is due to the pole zero cancellation both pole and zero are occurring at the same point so those will be cancelled and we will get an FIR system so that could be a possible but in general most of the cases we will see that we will not have any poles with an FIR system now filters are characterized by the types of impulse response filters are characterized by the type of impulse responses if and filter have finite impulse response called fir filter If and filter have infinite impulse response, then it is called IIR filter. Now both filters have some advantages and disadvantages. So we will discuss the difference between this FIR and IR filters. So FIR has linear phase, linear phase response. What linear phase response is? Linear phase is very important with the filters. We have already seen that the group delay tau g is equal to minus of del theta omega over del omega. What does it mean? That if we have a system and we are providing an input with the different different frequency signals different omegas are provided to this particular system and they goes through a delay and then we get an output again with different frequencies in this particular output now this group delay is nothing but the gradient of the phase that means if this group delay is not constant if tau g is not constant then frequencies will face different different delays according to their frequencies sorry all the frequencies will face different different kind of delay and if we put input at time instant n, the output will be reached with different different frequencies at different different time and that is distortion. Then we will have distortion. But if tau g is constant and if tau g is constant then all the frequencies which will go through this particular system will face a constant delay that means if they are coming after 5 seconds, 10 seconds or 20 seconds but at what time they will come they will follow the same trend the by the time they are put in as an input to this particular system that means that will not treated as distortion so this is a very important point with FIR filters that means they have linear phase response right and they follow this particular case that this tau g omega tau g is constant that means for that particular tau g to be constant this del d theta omega by d omega should be equal to constant that means this d theta omega this theta omega should be linear in nature then only tau g omega will be tau g omega or tau g will be equal to constant right so this 
property is very important. Second case is FIR systems are stable in nature. Now we will come to the IR filters. IR filters are not necessarily stable, not always stable, sometimes stable and cannot have exactly a linear phase. Okay, but these are the issues with the IR filter. These are the issues. But what is advantage is advantage of IR filter is advantage is if we want to achieve a specified magnitude to achieve a specified magnitude magnitude response of IIR filter is of much lower order compared to FIR filters. That means IR filters are much or you can say less less complex compared a fire filters if magnitude to be concerned concerned okay so these are the basic differences between IR and FIR filter and the importance of linear phase with the digital filters right so after this particular part we will discuss FIR filters and type of FIR filters and how we achieve these FIR filters in further lectures thank you very much